Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and this is Sunday Notes 3. Today's focus is going to be on our hydraulic tracer attachment on the back side of my carriage here. Over the years, I've been asked many, many questions. Some of my videos, I've actually covered it, like Trace It and a couple other things. Many people that watch and subscribe do not go back and watch my prior videos. So, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and try to answer most of the questions that I've been receiving over the years. Some of the questions are, why is it beat in at an angle? How come I use this old tool post right here? How does the hydraulics know where to move this? How do you set up the, the stylus? I'm going to try to answer many of those, if not all of those questions for you today. Okay, I moved my light from the mount so you got a good clear view of the side of the hydraulic tracer. Now there's basically only two knobs, a cross feed, which is actually the amount that you would dial in to take the, um, the next cut amount off of your part. And this dial just goes down to a 90 degree and feeds this part, this slide, in and out like the compound does on your lathe or cross feed does. This is increments of one thousandths per side. All right, and that lets you adjust for each cut how much your material you're actually gonna be taking off. This control actually releases the hydraulics and sets the control to the stylus, which is hanging down here. This comes and touches the side of the part here and causes the spool valve, which is over here, and I'm going to get you another position so you'll see that in actually working with pressure on here. I just want to show you there's basically just two controls to the hydraulic tracer once this is set up. Your in and out feed and your actual engagement of your hydraulics. Um, let's fire off the power supply now. Okay, this is a pretty simple package here. You got your on and off control here. Uh, your motor is here, your hydraulic pump sets down in the tank with its pickup, and it also has an old metal twist filter uh, in it, and you want to do that once a year or so. A simple gauge here, it never quite goes to zero, and it never goes past when, when I turn it on. It never goes past there. Um, it's been like that since day one, um, and it's all, I've completely cleaned it out, and cleaned every part of it. So everything inside that hydraulic tank and inside hydraulically is clean, even though it looks like this on the outside. Um, so it can handle the abuse back here. And once in a while I blow it off and maybe every couple years I give it a bath. But other than that, that's as simple as it is back here. That's the power supply. We have to take five because I was just brought out some breakfast here. So I got a couple eggs from our chickens there and some bacon and look at that pre-jellied bread. Okay, take five. Alright, a quick view is I want to show you from the lever to the spool valve is connected by this straight shaft in here. On this shaft is the stylus mounted down here. So when you release that lever, the stylus is allowed to go in and read the part. But this shaft over here comes up to the spool valve. And that is actually, the stylus is telling that spool valve where to go, how to shift that hydraulics in and out. All right, so let's go up above now and I'm gonna show you that spool valve in action. All right, from up above, you'll be able to see from the handle control right here that I can, I can fluctuate that. When I let it go, the spool valve is telling this to advance forward. It, the spool valve has a slight spring in there and the spool valve is made up of two ports going in two different directions. It has a control port and it has a, a, a bypass port, which puts, the, that's why you got three lines here. So you got supply and return and you have bypass. And <clears throat> I'm, gonna re I'm gonna reach down underneath now and when I pull this back, it ever so slightly, I mean, it doesn't take much to control that. You can hardly even see that go in and out when I pull back and let it go forward, pull back, and let it go forward. But I let it like that. Now I can grab this thing like this. And I can't make this thing go back, but my little pinky down here can control that.
pretty amazing the design of this thing okay the angle of the hydraulics comes in at, at 30 degrees off of the 90 and the reason why that is is so that the stylus and the tool bit can come away when it comes to a variable diameter change or a face it needs to be able to pull back from a face if it's going to do a face and i'll show you an example of that coming up all right so that's 30 degrees that's what it's set there all right and then it comes in now i use a very simple tool block and i've only made one modification to it and it was to put it in this position here it, it came with it straight and almost everything that you would normally do with faces and ever and and odd steep inclines you would do straight out the tool bit would want to come straight out only because i do a lot of aquamet marine shafting and that's what that pattern is that's in there now and it comes and it climbs slightly comes straight climbs slightly and then has a very gradual taper i like to run my tool bit with a slight bit of angle right here because the performance of this tracer and the material that I'm cutting love a lot of tool pressure and this position of this tool bit is why I made that block go in that position okay now we're gonna be loosening that we're gonna be pulling this out we're gonna be changing out to a DNM style tool bit which is much better for getting more creative designs rather than straight lines and slight tapers Another comment I usually get is about the cracks in the outside rubber coating on these braided hydraulic lines. This is exactly how they looked in 1994 when I put this thing together and put it on here. They've been doing fine. Okay, we're just going to switch our block over. And we just raise it up enough uh, so... <clears throat> Actually, when we, when we change this, usually we like to... Make sure it's clean underneath so we blow out underneath it and that oil, uh, you know we don't mind oil there we just want it to set flat all right there's a pin there and that i i've only chosen a couple different uh locations here to, to pivot it but that's that's its stock position right there now we don't need to change this height and everything all the time because all my one inch tool bits are exactly on center with this one shim that I created when I first set it up. All right, so the compound or the tool block is now set. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change this out to one of our uh, D&M holders. This is a tool block that just takes up uh, the, the, the space above the tool. And this is the shim that works on every one of my one inch shanks. Holds it exactly on center line. Okay, here's our DNM. And it happens to have a DNMP positive action there. And we just set this right on here. Now sometimes we, we will play with this going in and out depending on how large our diameter is because we only have a limited stroke coming in and then a limited amount of uh, clearance and so sometimes this comes into play where you need to choke this up or you need to extend it out depending on your pattern that you're using and uh, the diameter of the part you're actually working at all right but right now we can just go ahead and set that in set that like that and that's center and that's ready to go and it was just two two set screws loosen change it out two screws tighten all right moving the block around all right that we got clearance on the front here so we can come into a flat face and then face out and we got a lot of a lot of back clearance like this sometimes we had items actually i'm gonna i'm gonna grab one of my items there when you watch my welcome video I'm doing that long stem for the rudder and it comes in with a nice curve on the back side and you can see that it has clearance to do that curve 
So that's why this bit is comes into play a lot on sculpting. Okay, in 1994 is when I got the lathe. In 1995, I actually started playing with the uh, tracer attachment on here. And one of the very first projects that I made I, was 100 sets of these candle operas. And uh, they're turn right, 1995. Limited edition, was it was asked to be stamped that. Speaking of limited editions, uh, we're still making our um, T-Nut Slot Scraper limited edition. Get her done at Bar Z Summer Bash 2018. Compliments Keith Fenner. YouTube, KEF791. All right, we're making these by the hundreds, and they're still available. Get yours now. And the customer was uh, into real estate, and he gave a set of these out to his clients when he deemed it uh, you know giving on his part and this project here the first lesson I learned on this is the capabilities of continuous motion and what can be cut and what can't be cut on the back side meaning once you come into something and you come and you turn that diameter and do that face you come over and then coming in and dipping down on the back side meaning coming back into a smaller diameter how where does that come into play and how much can you get away with and i actually did these candle operas in two steps because i had some cut-ins here that were uh steeper than then the tool bit would be able to come in so i had a lot of straight angles on the back sides of these and when i turned it over excuse me i turned it over and uh, i i had to cut it in the other direction so what i what i did is i developed i built my own collet so this sat in the chuck steady rest right here and then i made a square collet nut here and this was a collet i just slid it like this and put a taper on here and the same thing in here and i made my own collet and that's how i ran them uh, so this is the pattern that i used and i turned that one diameter once that diameter was turned then that fit into the collet and of course this was the cap in where the uh, candle went in and i ran my bell center in that in there and then i was able to go ahead and then do the back side of each of those radiuses Okay, shortly after the year 2000, I developed and created a flat tool pattern holder to fit between the centers. And it basically took the centers and then I dipped down on one side of the plate there so that I could set down and center line would be the edge of the flat pattern. And, uh, and also, too, you can hold your flat patterns up to this and kind of run it through the, the process. And you can make sure that everything is making contact without dragging the back side and you can test whether your pattern is going to be making it or not you start learning that that radius and how much that tool bit uh clearance on the back side all right and this is uh the the pattern i used in creating those shafts that you see me cut in that welcome aboard video uh for my uh new viewers there um so i i was making rudder rudder post and each one of these is where a web was joining on these registers right here on those diameters there and uh, this was an excellent excellent project to combine my capabilities and talents I've developed on the plasma cam uh, to knowing what my tracer can do and uh, it was an enjoyable project all right so let's move on to uh, setting up the patterns okay we chucked up a diameter here uh, on a project that we're going to be working on, we're not we're not going to we're not going to do the project today, but we're going to we're we're using this as part of our demonstration, and we are going to be setting this up, and it's going to be another video series. All right, so we we got this dialed in just roughly so that we can say that we're going to be playing with this diameter, and which is say that this is where it's at. So we're setting up our tracer attachment to correspond with what we're chucking on, and that's why you. I made that collet assembly for those candle operas because I needed to get that part out far enough so I could work the pattern. It was a it was a matter of the tracer not being able to get into where I wanted it or being able to hold it and that collet let me hold the part without damaging it and sticking it out where the the the, the tracer pattern could be placed. All right, so what we have here is 
this is this is in here where we want and we want to reference this space or the end of our part so what we did is we we've taken out the pattern that was back there we let the hydraulic cylinder dead the end there and then we can control in and out if we want to bring it so that we can really get an idea how close that is all right so just right there so we'll roughly know that this is the start of our project or the start of the pattern that we want to make and then the rest of the part will be machined out of this so let's go around the other side and we're going to set the pattern up that we're playing with in between those centers okay the we're using this as a practice run here so we're going to be setting up our arbor um, and this happens to be an actual arbor for supporting um, a, a attachment into a index head. But it happens to be number 40, and then this is how you tighten it on the back of the index head. But it's excellent as far as the pattern that we want to go ahead and create, because we're going to be making a couple 40 taper holders like this. And we need to hold tiny. And then we have an inch and a half as well. So this is two inch, an inch and a half. And that's what, uh, that's what that video series is going to be on. And this is kind of a practice. So let's go ahead and we're going to show you how we're going to set up this mandrel in that. Okay. These centers are adjustable in all directions just about. Except for up and down. Alright. The three quarter goes into t this is a giant t-nut slot with a precision flat surface and this goes the entire length of the bed so I can I can actually put like a six foot pattern in here all right so I can slide this back here all right and once in a while wiping and blowing and cleaning it out behind this thing is pretty good uh, uh, so it, it uh, will do its thing properly um, Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this one back until we're at the starting point. Now, we know this actually, we're going to do some modification to this because this diameter really should be right here and this should be a little relief and then that should start. But we're just going to, for right now, we're just going to say that right about there is the beginning of our, our cut or our part. So I'm going to bring the center in to right there and I'm going to tighten. Tighten this up against that surface there. Okay, now this knot here and this knot here adjust your center in and out. And these centers also are can be screwed in and out to create the tension there. This lock nut right here, or arm, is to lock it in in travel there's a V slot here and these have a, a point at the very end of them and that's what keeps them you know you can undo this and then you can fold this thing around so they're out of the way okay if you're gonna use them you can bring them up in here like that and alignment in here you can do that with indicating your part and what it's doing up there on the straight bar or you can put a straight bar between your centers and then you can indicate your carriage movement in relationship to the carriage. Your carriage top to your, your your carriage bottom and you can measure that slip. Okay, so we picked our spot here and we pretty well secured this one. We can we have we have an adjustment that we can once we lock these we can adjust our part back and forth and sometimes you need to fine tune the start or the shoulder wherever or you're matching up or you're putting something in or you cut it and you go hey we like to move it a little bit you can fudge that in the adjustments of your pattern back here versus moving your part into the chuck all right we're tight here now we're going to bring in our other one we're going to hold this up here and uh we're going to start our pump and move this back out of the way okay we bring that up there loosely, it's in between the centers right now, and we'll go ahead and we'll tighten this. We just make sure it never binds. Alright, now we tighten that up there, 
we got firm pressure on here sometimes there might be a scar on here and you don't want it so you'd rotate this around so you had the good side this stylus is going to hit dead nuts on the side of that okay now this is coming in at 30 so this is actually angled a little bit and then this has actually got a little back angle back this way here this stylus is a really sharp wedge so that it can come in and touch this surface here but then come over here and ride out on on that on that surface there <clears throat> so it's ever so slightly less than 90 on this side and it's steep on this side here to your 30 degree um, angle of approach okay <coughs> now we can go up and adjust our, our mount we're going to take and check our, our tool bit in relationship to our starting part and then we'll be able to travel this along and, and watch the motion of the carriage okay we came back up here on the top and we're we're at this spot and we're going to go ahead and we're going to crank our table our way now because we know that we're at the end of the stroke you want to work you want to work somewhere in the middle of your stroke here now as we crank this back we brought that the, the straight end in so that 30 degrees actually kind of comes in and it actually moves back and we actually have almost almost an inch of clearance here but all you got to do is bring this back up here and that puts you back in exactly the spot that you were when you set up your pattern okay so we would be going along here and in the straight mode and it'll be cutting on the straight we haven't fed this in anywhere okay if we wanted to take a cut we'd start feeding this in but we're still out past that now this is going to follow the pattern even though you're outside with your tool bit and then you just adjust your tool bit in until you start working those diameters all right right there it just gets to the taper and and you can see that this will start increasing its clearance and it goes out and it has a slight straight there at the top of the 40 and then it'll hit that shoulder and it comes out now we need to have that quite a bit bigger because that diameter down there is not going to be big enough for us to create a hub for that two inch uh, end mill to set down in there so we're going to have to be modifying this diameter right here and we're going to kind of make plans on how that's going to happen now all right and now you can follow your pattern back down but most of the time I set a zero on my travel indicator here and then normally I make the pass you come all the way through your whole cut paragraph all right you get out there and then you bring it out and then I come back to my zero and then I bring her back in and then she starts back at zero again I have this rack here and it has a lot of my standard tapers and I have a lot of standard marine shafting sizes so if I want to turn a two inch shaft I grab a two inch mandrel inch and a half uh, inch and a quarter inch and three eighths I got it you know so you can flip it either way and the same thing here and here so these basically are actual samples that you can put in there which are 3d patterns or cylindrical patterns okay and that's what this rack is and here's my candle operas there's some other couple different styles in here I made some ball joints once and there's my pattern for the ball joints you got your taper and then your ball on the end there and then this was the thread diameter right here and I think those were for a Mack truck or something like that um, something that couldn't be purchased again and we we went ahead and we made that all right all right I brought up this bar is just setting on top of my compound but this is my flat pattern uh, holder and what I've done is I took a piece of um, a 5 8 or 3 quarter by uh, two and I went ahead and I milled this down so that the center line or split line of this was equal to the center that I put in each end here so that that thing actually hangs in between the centers and the pattern surface actually puts it in line with the stylus so that you get center line and I also have an ad adapter that C clamps to this in a, in a slot a pin that goes into that T slot so that it keeps this thing from rotating side to side because sometimes pressures do cause it to move and I've had to make it stable but that's the last thing that goes on after you have everything all set up now here is here's that shaft um, pattern 
and I just set up this, I have an equal hole pattern drilled and tapped in here, and that's what I had this set for. So I, I wasn't sure where I was going to want to hold this or where it was going to go in the position of this. I have I have a pattern that's over here now, and it just happens to be flat, and then it comes in and it's bullnosed over here. I have a lot of other patterns that I, I had to create, and this actually sets over this. So this comes down and it kind of dishes it out. I had, I had to make some glass molds and I used this for that pattern there. Um, I think this was, uh, I don't know if I did, if I had to do this radius right here. It looks like I had to do the radius. This is left rough over here. Um, this piece right here, I set that, I set that key in there so I could just toe clamp this like this and I came in and I, I, I cut out, this was a hand grip for those glass molds that I made. So I, I, I see a lot of different things in here. I actually made this, uh, this was an adapter so you can put this in here. Um, I think this fits the whole pattern, it's up here close. And, um, and I, needed, I needed a certain angle so I made this so that I could do, I could put this in there and I could adjust this angle wherever I wanted to. Uh, some neat things like that. Uh, here's a here's a dish full of circles and lots of times you need to make bull nose shafting so I went ahead and I just took and parted off uh, wafers of the shafting so that I could get that perfect radius and then I can just hold this on here and I can put that radius exactly split line or sticking out or wherever I want and then I can create uh, the radius and I just have various sizes here and I made them in a couple different ways. Uh, inside radius, I just kind of milled it right into the part itself. And here's another round. And then here's a blank, just so that I'd be ready in case I, I need one off offhand. I just go ahead and I part it off and then mill out the circle, uh, the diameter, and uh, and be done with it. All right. So there's there's a lot of tooling that you'll make up for your tracers and they come into play from time to time and having them on hand is really fast and easy a lot of times okay i think that brings us to a conclusion on the tracer attachment i've uh, gone through the functions and the setup of it um we'll be catching up on our video creating the uh tool holders the number 40 taper tool holders and we'll be seeing this in action we have many other videos that are still in the makings. We've just we've we've had a slowdown because we are straight out. All right, the shop is busier than it's been in a long time, and I thank you. All right, until next time, get her done.